Hey guys, it's Austin. I'm going to do a little video here on channel swings and channel banks at Lake the Ozarks during the winter time, how to find them on your maps and other things to look for, and most importantly, how to catch fish on them. So uh, first we'll start off with, I'm just using Navionics web app. You can Google it, it's free. And then the other thing I'll be using here is Google Earth. So we'll do just a quick little thing about the lake of the layout. So um, here's the lower end of the lake up to the toll bridge. This is gonna be the clearest, most stable water on the lake, generally speaking. You have the gravaway arm here, which is just a major creek, generally very clear water there as well. Uh, we'll do mid lake from the toll bridge down to this uh, confluence of the river and the Nianguas. Uh, we'll just call that mid lake, generally medium stained water. Um, fishing is fair throughout that. Here is the Grand Glaze, another major uh, creek channel or river of Lake the Ozarks. Uh, this receives a fair amount of fishing pressure, especially because uh, PB2, which a lot of tournaments go out of, is here. Moving westward, we have uh, the Nianguas, the Little Niangua and the Big Niangua. It can be relatively clear water. Um, can also get stained, but if you notice, there are not nearly as many um, pockets or coves here. It fishes a lot like a river system. Then here you have the Osage River. Um, the lower part of it is a lot like the mid lake, but when you start getting further up the river, it is really narrows and you get a lot shallower water, just a lot of bends in that as you can see. So uh, it's gonna be a lot more color and the fish is quite a bit different than the lower end of the lake or anything else. So now that we have a little lay of the land, we'll get into uh, what a channel swing is and what to look for. All right, so we will use this as an example here. You have a cove. Uh, if you can see, you have the main river channel, this dotted line here. This is in the Grand Glaze. I'll zoom in slightly. You can see here, this other dotted line is a creek bed. And this creek bed comes all the way out to here. So before uh, a dam was built and the lake was flooded, this was just an old creek that ran into the river. So um, looking past that, you've got your creek channel that runs in, kind of comes up on this bank, goes back towards the middle, stays in the middle a little bit, and then here it goes right up on the bank and then comes right back out into the middle. So this section here is a prime example of a channel swing. So a good indicator of this is a rock change. Something else you can look for, um, I will pull it up here on Google Earth. So this is what we were just looking at. Little pro tip is um, Lake the Ozarks has a drawdown, a winter drawdown, where the lake goes down about six feet. So if you download Google Earth, you can't use the web version, it doesn't have this feature you can pull your slider back. So if you just open Google Earth, you're gonna be here in August and the water's up at full summer pool. But if you go to this little clock, you can look at historical uh, images. So you can pull this back to, this is the best one I found really, is March of 2012 and you can clearly see the, the bank and the rock changes. So um, the channel, Creek channel came over here and it starts to swing. It really hits right here on the bank, but you can see a rock change starting. So you can tell the creek channel is starting to get a little bit closer over here. So this is a good spot to start, which is just a rock change because you're going from smaller busted up rock to larger chunk rock. And you can see it kind of fades away a little bit, but then you can see it really gets into it here because this is where the creek channel really swings up on the bank. But um, bass like anything that is a change to break up the monotony of the bank, something different, that's generally where you can find bass. And your goal is to make the lake fish as small as possible. All right, your next question is probably, why are channel swings and channel banks good and why should I care about them? 
and that is uh, they're basically used as a highway during a transition period for shad and all other fish. So we'll use Mill Creek here in the gravel as an example. So you've got your um, creek channel that runs down and this you know will obviously run all the way to the back and that even splits off here into another creek. So um, generally speaking fish will start in the winter. There, there's going to be some fish on the main lake out here. There's going to be fish uh, just in deeper water. Shad going to be are going to be in deeper water and as Spring starts to get closer, the water warms up, and length of day gets longer. It's going to send a signal for these fish to start heading back to spawn. So some of these fish, you know, they might head off here and spawn in this little shallow pocket back here up behind these docks. And then some more fish are going to go further down. Um, you know, they might stop here and all the way back through here there's, there could be fish that are stopping to spawn in different spots so the fish are going to be using this you know all the way through kind of as something to move along and then they're going to stop on secondary points um, underwater points like this flat kind of comes out it's a good spot close to deep water there's all sorts of things that they could stop on on their transition wherever they may end up going so it's basically just looking at a high percentage area. Now I do think that there are some fish that are more or less resident fish that do not make an entire migration out to the main lake and then in the fall they don't come all the way back to the shallows. Um, a fish basically needs adequate oxygen, food, and usually just access to deep water and shallow water to be comfortable with any weather changes and that's really all they need. So if you're looking at this bank here, um, you know, the fish can get access to deep water and shallow water. Um, they've got docks, which they can use as cover. There could also be brush piles around there. And then as long as there's food, which is either shad or crawdad or bluegill, um, you know, they have everything they need. And there's really no reason for them to make an excessively long travel route unless they're in need of something. So that's just kind of my two cents on that. Okay, so I'll go to another creek here in Mid Lake and uh, we'll talk about basically four additional things that you can look for and that can help you uh, narrow down the lake and narrow down your pattern. So the first thing is wind. Wind is important to help break up the outline of your bait. It helps with your moving baits. It helps position the fish in a more predictable manner. And I generally want the wind to hit the bank um, square, is what I call it, or I guess really perpendicular of what you're fishing. That's how I prefer it. Um, so say you're fishing this side here where the channel kind of swings up. I would prefer the wind to be hitting directly on it, but up and down it helps too. I mean, it's better than nothing from my experience. Um, the next thing we will look at is shad, which kind of goes hand in hand with the wind because uh, Lake the Ozarks is primarily gizzard shad, um, and they feed on phytoplankton and zooplankton. Once they get Big enough and are mature enough they can actually start to feed on some things on the bottom but that's usually when they get a little bit bigger so the gizzard shad are going to follow the phytoplankton and the zooplankton which is just microscopic things that can get blown around by the wind so if the wind is coming right on this bank here that's going that can help blow and group up like the plankton and stuff and then I think the shad follow to eat. And then the bass are usually not far behind or the bass could have already been there and then the shad show up and they've got an easy meal. So that's something to always think about is the wind. You'll hear a lot of people say, you know, we're chasing the wind, which is just looking for creek channel banks or whatever their pattern might even be, but just with the wind blowing on it, that can just help a lot. All right, the next thing we'll look at here is additional cover. 
uh, which I pretty much sum it up to docks and brush piles at Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, we'll go in here in Lynn Creek. This is a major, major creek in Lake the Ozarks. Um, we can even go here. All right, so we'll look at the creek bed coming in, comes up here, and you've got docks on this um, channel bank here. You've got a couple docks. So within your channel swing or channel bank, this is just extra cover. Now there might be um, brush piles on the corners here or here. People tend to sink brush off docks, but other people will also sink their own brush and they may put it wherever they think um, is the best spot. So there's really, I mean, there's tons of brush piles on this lake. If you just get your side imaging or down imaging out and idle around, you'll find just a massive amount. So usually you almost need to look past just the generic brush pile and you need to figure out a pattern within that or the same thing goes with the dock. So, okay, so this is a huge, huge creek. All right, say you fish channel swings and the banks all the way down through here, but you don't start catching any until like here. All right, so you notice it comes up. Through this whole thing, you didn't catch anything until the back third. All right, so say you pull out of Lynn Creek and you go over to something similar. Say you, say you pull up in this one here and you fish the same thing. You, you start on the main lake, you follow the channel, you come all the way down, you're gonna start catching any until, you know, here. So now you've got two things, two coves in a row, similar setups, where you're not catching them until the back third of the cove. So you know you need to be focusing on the back third of the cove. And it could also, it could be the opposite, where you don't catch them until uh, you get halfway back but there's only a small section that's good, or you only catch them on the first third of the way in. There's usually a slot where the fish are in a certain transition period where you're going to catch the most of your fish, and that's just where they happen to be, and you can kind of run that throughout the day. All right, now that I've gone over the mapping portion, I will kind of go over the bait portion a little bit here of what I like to use and what I like to use first to help break down the water and catch as many fish as possible. So first order of business, uh, I like an Alabama rig. Pretty popular nowadays. Uh, I've got two dummies on top here with no hooks. Then I've got three hooked baits on the bottom. Uh, I've only got one on here right now though. But I generally will run like one uh, that is slightly bigger or a different color in the middle and then the other two are either matching or sometimes I will run the whole bait, like the whole rig, different color baits. That way I can try and figure out what the fish like. Um, but generally I'll start with like either a white swim bait or this is bluegill flash. This is just a good color that works all across the country, especially if the water is a little bit clear and there's a little bit of sunlight going on. So if you can use the A rig, that's the first thing I like to use just because it's like power fishing in the winter. You can just cover so much water with it. It's awesome. And uh, you can catch a really big fish on it. So if you can't use an A-Rig, because a lot of times uh, these tournaments now are banning them, next best thing is a jerk bait. Uh, a lot of different brands. You've got Mega Bass. This is a Lucky Strike, Six Cents. You've got Spro. Uh, you have Lucky Craft, uh, Berkeley. There's, you know, there's so many people making jerk baits now. It's ridiculous. Um, Something to look out for though, uh, if you like to throw mega bass, is the bills because a lot of times in the winter on these channel banks, channel swings, sometimes you gotta throw your bait all the way up on shore, like really close to shore. And then you reel just a little bit into the rocks and give it one or two jerks. And then sometimes that's like the slot where the fish are gonna be hanging out in. And with those thinner bills, you start hitting off those rocks and the bills break off and you're you get left with a trash bait and it's frustrating for $25, but I think that's part of the reason that the Mega Basses are so good is uh, 
the thin bill and they just have like a really good rolling action. But uh, another thing you're gonna wanna do is get some lead strips, suspend strips or um, some solder wire to wrap around like your hook shank here to help suspend the bait because as the water temperature gets cooler, sometimes these are gonna wanna float. So you need to put um, a little bit of weight on the front of the bait. I like to get them to suspend nose down just a little bit like this. And either you're gonna want a slow sink a slow rise or just a totally neutral bait that kind of depends you know on the days um, so there's just a lot of variables with jerk bait fishing so just do the best you can to try and eliminate the variables and figure out what is going on what the fish like uh, next thing I like to throw is a uh, finesse jig so I call it a finesse jig some people might call it a spider jig is when you take this top portion here uh, your, of your skirt and you trim it around so it just flares out so it's no longer a full skirt that's just football style goes to the rocks really well I tied that one this is a uh, Omega custom tackle jig baby J uh, this is also a very fine finesse jig caught a lot of fish on those and then here is another one that I tied is 7 16 uh, this one's a little bit beat up too it's got a finer skirt material finer strand so it gets a little bit more action and then here is the trailer. So uh, this is a Croco Gator Ring Crawl. Um, I'll show it here. So it's very much a do nothing style trailer, which is good for the winter. Just kind of glides around, doesn't move much. And when it's on the jig, so your jig's going through the water, um, this, the claws and stuff, they kind of sit up in the water a little bit and uh, just float. And it's all stretched out and it looks a lot better than it does in my hand here but it just looks very natural kind of like that in the water and it'll just sit there so i'll oftentimes just kind of drag this jig around or hop it a little bit and as soon as i hit a piece of brush or a rock i just let it sit let it sit for 10 15 seconds and then give it just a little shake and then maybe let it sit a little bit longer and that's when you're going to get the bites a lot of time it's just the bait just sitting there doing nothing so you you got it sitting there and you feel a little tick in your line or you feel um, any, you know, difference or start swimming a little bit, feels a little mushy, a little extra weight, set the hook because that's, that's a fish. Uh, last thing or second last thing, I guess, will be a shaky head, which is just an alternative to your jigs. You can throw the uh, ring crawl in there. You can throw like a grub or a straight tail worm, something with just not a ton of action and just drag that along. Do not be afraid to throw your jigs or shaky heads all the way up on the bank and then drag them out to 20, 25 feet of water, especially if there's brush piles. Uh, sometimes those fish can get stacked up in the deep brush piles and uh, you can really catch them out of there and they can be big too. Last thing I would recommend for the winter on these channel banks and stuff is just a regular old swim bait. Take it off the A-rig, uh, be a little more finesse. You know, if you don't have a bunch of wind or something, you still want to cover a little bit more water and uh, Maybe a jerk bait's not your thing. Throw the uh, swim bait, and uh, you can catch good fish on that. Especially if the water's a little bit more clear. So, like I was saying, bluegill flash is always a good color. But uh, there's a ton of different swim bait manufacturers, or you can even put a grub on your uh, swim bait head there and use that. So, hopefully, these tips help you a little bit. Um, Helps you break down the lake into a smaller fishable section so you can be more efficient and be in those high percentage areas. So I'll make some more videos over the winter here of uh, structure fishing, you know, like the Ozarks. But don't be afraid to take this info to other lakes as well because generally it's, it's the same. There just might be a few other variables. So thanks for watching and I hope it helps.